politics and current affairs issues may sound casual when it's discussed by the wrong persons in the wrong circle. But with the Meiji Daniels, the discussion can only get more interesting. The analysis, the interviews, the findings, the details, the actions, the argument, the hot seat. Only on one show, The Round Table. Join the Meiji Daniels on Ataba 88.9 FM every Mondays between 2 p.m. to 3 p.m. as he tackles matters arising in the news and political space with his prolific guests discussing issues of politics and current affairs. The Round Table with the Meiji Daniels. Let's the conversation begin. <laughs> From studios of the Bite on Naya FM, it's the round table. Uh, my name is Tumeji Daniels. All across Nigeria, there is a news of crisis from uh, uh, Ibadan, that is in New York State, to Ondo, to Ogun State, to Zamfara, to uh, Kaduna. You hear news of uh, farmers clashing with us men. You hear news about banditry, about kidnapping, and so many other uh, forms of other crimes. Well, uh, the, the major one that everybody is talking about uh, in the country, especially uh, in the southwest part of Nigeria, uh, is the clashes between farmers and us men. Uh, you have, you see, if, uh, as men moving from uh, the Sai region and coming into coastal, uh, coastal countries. Well, countries in the Sai region include northern Senegal, uh, southern uh, Mauritania, the central Mali, there's northern Burkina Faso, that is part of Burkina Faso, the, ex the extreme south of Algeria, uh, there's Niger, the extreme north of Nigeria as well, and the extreme north of Cameroon, the Central African Republic, Central Chad, uh, Central and Southern Sudan, the extreme north of uh, of South Sudan, Eritrea, and the extreme north of Ethiopia. Now, the, the Sai region is not conducive for farming, as it is covered mostly by grasses, woodland, and then shrubs. So it, it allowed others to do their work without having to destroy anyone's farms. But the region was later hit by a massive drought. Uh, that it was without water or grass and uh, for, for so many years and cows died in the process. It got so bad that they were referred to the Sahel region as Africa's hunger bed. The land became so degraded that the United Nations in 1994 had to declare June the 12th as the worthy to combat the certification and drought. So, like I said, others started migrating into coastal countries and more often than not clashing with farmers in the process. There are statistics indicating that fatalities from other farmers' clashes in Nigeria average more than 2,000 annually. Uh, from 2011 to 2016. Uh, in spite of effort at subnational, national and international levels, there's still no solution to this problem. It's also bad that eviction notices uh, are being issued now uh, in Nondo uh, by non-state actors in New York State and even in Ogun State. And then of recent, uh, the interview by the Bauchi State Governor, Bala Mohamed, saying that others uh, need to carry AK-47, but his aid has come out to say that it was misunderstood. Uh, reacting to the very eviction notices uh, being issued to us men across the country, the National Secretary of Mieti Allah, Alassane Saleh, uh, said that nobody has the right if you say you're going to evict us, we will resist eviction. We have been surviving in that environment. If we do not resist, we'll be wiped out of the planet. If you kill a harder, don't go and sleep. We will revisit you. And it is not because we hate your tribe. People attack others. And in one way or the other, others are finding a way to retaliate. All those who travel to the Benin Republic and others are coming back home. All those saying they will bar foreign others from entering Nigeria are just playing to the gallery because if they are aware of the ECOWAS protocols, they would know they cannot chase them away. That is why the position of the Bauchi State Governor is the true position. You have no right to evict anybody from any part of the country and number has increased recently because of the tension in Ghana and Benin Republics. The ones in Benin Republic have integrated with the Yoruba in such a way that they speak the language. They were initially living in the Southwest and they are coming back. Well, that's, that's, uh, Except from the interview granted by the National Secretary of Mietiala. What he referred in that interview to the Equals Protocol. The Equals Protocol on Trans Humans is, is part of what we'll be talking about 
on the program this afternoon. It's something that uh, it appears people uh, don't often talk about this uh, ECOWAS protocol. We'll be looking at that and talking about some of the uh, provisions of the ECOWAS protocol. What President Muhammad Bari is also uh, talking to, uh, a statement by Garba Shio, uh, which uh, is in today's paper, says that the president has vowed that his government will protect all religious and ethnic groups with a majority or minority in line with his responsibility under the constitution. In a reaction to the report of the breakout of violence in some parts of the country by some ethnic and sectional groups, President Buhari warned that the government would not allow any ethnic or religious group to stoke up hatred and violence against other groups. The president condemned such violence and gave assurance that his government will act decisively to stop the spread of any such violence. Well, this is not the first time that uh, the Muhammad Buhari presidency will be condemning uh, violence, banditry, uh, and what Nigerians are saying is that they need actions uh, beyond all these press statements. Let me quickly introduce my studio guest uh, with me this afternoon, Security Spam, Mr. Abouadamji. Welcome on the program. Thank you very much. Thank and you also Chartered Accountant and Public Commentator, Mr. Rotimi Ogulaya. You're welcome on the program. Thank you, Mr. Rimeji. Also ICT Expert, Mr. Tosin Yagere. You're welcome on the program. Thank you very much. Well, today on the program, we'll be talking about the escalating, rising tensions across the country. Let let me begin from uh, Mr. Abu Adams. At some point, even though there were crises uh, between farmers and us men, uh, it was not as serious as this. Then uh, now it appears that it has escalated to another dimension. W what do you think changed the dynamics? I think um, from the security point of view, the major factor or the major factors that changed the narrative that we are in today one, like you said, the uncontrolled migration of um, uh, these headers from all over Africa uh, into Nigeria. And while this was going on, we have always complained about our porous borders and the like. And so they were coming at a rate that we could not match, you know, their um, entry with our own ability, you know, to to stop them. Secondly, we have always had, you know, the problem of um, a kind of delayed response to security challenges by the political class in this country. Uh, because at the time um, these headers started coming in, and we're noticing that um, it, 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 they were coming, the clashes were taking new dimensions, the, the, the headers are in possession of sophisticated arms and ammunition. There was no concerted effort, you know, to address this issue. And um, the headers continue to perpetrate their evil. Don't forget that um, the farmers we are talking about, they stay in one place. They have been there as the place they know as their means of livelihood. And uh, you and I have seen, uh, sometimes um, the activities of the headers are sheer wickedness. You have seen some videos where they will enter the farm, they harvest the, the crop there, and uh, they feed them to their animals. And those are areas that um, the citizenry expected a very stern, you know, response from uh, government, you know, uh, uh, in dealing with the situation. But you see, uh, we, we, are, we are in a situation where people are over conscious about what they say, about what they do, and you still allow situations to, to escalate. And while this was going on, people began to read, uh, don't forget that we have our own other issues of um, uh, nationalism, let me use the word. Uh, some persons are not satisfied with the present uh, uh, constitution. Cool. They don't believe is uh, is uh, serving you know the interests of the federating uh, units in this country, and so those sentiments began to play in. If you look at um, so I say politics is part of uh, okay, why, this, why, why as, as, as a matter of fact, is one of the major factors. And what we are saying that uh, we needed to respond more more pragmatically than what we are doing. If you look at the global uh, terrorism index, uh, Nigeria is number th for 2020. Nigeria is number three. I think uh, outside Afghanistan and Pakistan, we are number three. And 
in that in that uh, uh, report out of all the people killed in nigeria for terrorism banding tree uh, uh, uh headsmen attack headsmen alone accounted for 26 percent yeah so you will agree that this is a major uh, challenge that we needed to face it more squarely this have not been the case as it were they have been taken as the normal uh, criminal activities that we see on a daily basis so you I, believe the problem is more serious than we're taking it of course it is because uh, as it is now uh yeah okay if you look at if you look at uh, uh in the southwest for instance where Amoteku Amo has been put in place uh, as part of the things to checkmate criminality, the, the, the headers have still not uh, stopped uh, attacking people on the farm. Uh, so it shows, and if you look at some, some, some of the videos, as if they have um, uh, an armed structure, you know, entirely to deal with the situation. That is the. Well, well, let me, let me ask you this. Yes. If, you, if you look at yes. uh, the situation I painted at the beginning of the program, yes. where uh, they are coming from the side region, which, is, which used to be semi arid, yes. where there are grasses and all of that, but yeah. now the situation has changed. Yes. They, 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 they need water and pasture for, for the animals. Yes. And then, so that means they can't all move, migrate to coastal countries. Yes. But they, they can do that. They can, the animals can graze yes. without, without attack. I'm coming. Yes. The, animals can, the animals can graze without them destroying people's farms. Why do you think they have taken that route of, of, of destroying people's farms, of attacking people? The, is, is that in response to something that happened in the past? Don't forget some, that. Some sort of aggression. Don't, don't forget the that. that. Where they are coming from? They are, they are coming from areas that have been faced with a lot of... Uh, uh, I don't want to use... Uh, conflicts. Uh, okay, a lot of conflicts. They are coming from areas that... There have been a lot of conflict. It's not as if they have been staying in peace with those people. And so while they were coming, they knew that they were going to face uh, um, uh, challenges resistance. of uh, resistance from Nigeria. And so most of them got, got themselves armed. Battle and so, ready. Battle ready, as it were. And that is why they don't seem to be abating with all the, the threats, with all the uh, measures uh, we are trying to put in place. Okay, now, if you look at it, uh just um uh, on 13th um there was a meeting called by the national security advisor of uh, all chiefs of staff heads of security and intelligence agencies uh, as of now he, he, he the government using the instrumentality of the office of the national security advisor uh wants to start um a program um a coordinated uh, program according to the release to deal with the situation and part of it is um, there's going to be a kind of town hall meeting with all the governors in a particular geopolitical zone and um, and uh, security agencies and their heads you know and of course other they, stakeholders one, one, one head I, I mean, maybe today with governors in the north exactly uh, security in Canada, service chiefs exactly and and, 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 and they, want to, and they, I want, they want to do this across the town, nation town, town, but you see thank god is coming at this time Maybe that is the maybe that is one of the effects of the change in leadership in the in the in the in the in the services. Uh, but those are things that long ago we are supposed to have uh, uh, been been done. Uh, been done and see whether it's going to work uh, for us or not. But at any rate, we are the way we are. Okay, let me talk to Mr. Tosin uh, in, in conflict management. Uh, one of the ways that you de-escalate tensions is by showing sympathy, especially to uh, the party which is considered uh, the victim. But when you listen to those in government and supposed leaders, uh, you get the impression that uh, it appears government has not shown enough compassion and understanding from the utterances, the actions that are coming up, uh, coming from uh, government, uh, not just at the national level, sometimes at the sub-national level. Why, why do you think this has been? Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, what, I, what I've seen with reactions and uh, with those who are desired to keep quiet is everybody trying to be politically correct. Mm. Nobody is addressing the enormity of the problem. We are not looking at the fact that this is no longer between the elders and the farmers. It's no longer common here. This is already threatening the, the fabric of our unity. And everybody that is making statements is making statements with the next election in view. Uh, 
you in the opening statement you spoke about the Bauchi State Governor, his statement is practically to impress those that will vote for him in the next election. <laughs> That's it's practically that's it. So you see everybody, and for those who even kept quiet and they are not fucking, it's also to be politically correct that you don't want to lose your vote because the people that okay, if I sympathize with this side, the side that probably attack them are the block where my vote is coming from. I don't want to, them to see me as being against them. So I would rather keep quiet or being inactive, or if I'm gonna speak. I will just speak out of excitement, just like what you, you know is 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 disheartening when a, a person occupying the position of a governor make a statement on camera and come back to say I was misunderstood, I was misquoted because by your position you know that what you are saying is as good as law. The moment a governor comes and say they have a right to carry. AK for example to defend you should know there are people who feed off that you should know that those who are carrying AK for example will see it as a justification for their action of course the national secretary of Mieti Allah referred to that yes particular interview and the, the farmers will also should be will be thinking that probably we should also buy AK for the seven to of defend course. our farms of course. <laughs> so the moment we get to that point you know that we are going into anarchy so we should what I think basically is that everybody occupied Political position that um, he, 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 does, he has nothing to do with political party. He, because when you see the statement made by the uh, then the state well, governor, who is a member of the PDP, who is a member of the PDP, mm -hmm. was a little bit to the extreme this way. Mm -hmm. And when Baoshi state governor was going to respond, who is also a member of the PDP, his own statement was also on the side. Right. Extreme here, mm -hmm. extreme here. So it's it's basically about everybody simply trying to defend their trade, which is votes. But the truth, which, which I think those in government in an in authority should understand, is that if everybody in Nigeria is dead because we are fighting ourselves, there's nobody to govern, there's nobody to vote, there's no vote to fight over. So I think we should all come together and appreciate that. This issue is beyond a farmer fighting a regular ice man. In fact, that has always been happening. When you have a farm before, and ice man comes there, it, they, they, there's always a mechanism of settling that. Is it that he pays you, or he gives you a one of his cow, or they, 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 it has always been happening when they. But that, that's no longer the situation. It's no longer the situation. Now you see somebody comes onto your farm. Is eating your farm and is telling you you are not going to do anything about it. Exactly. That is, is, is a different thing that I have uh, yams and you are eating the leaves of the yam, but you are investing the yam to feed the tuba to your. That that's uh, it at another level, and like what you read out at the at the opening, I think it should is a reason why those in authority should know that if everybody around us are facing drought, and you cannot rear cattle without water. It's something that we should know that definitely yeah, those come. real those neighbors rearing cattle will come. come. But, but, now, what have we done? That, that, that brings me to my next question. It's not just about Buhari because uh, what, what it, sometimes see, when this is discussed, people try to see, say ah Buhari presidency. See, Before now, the course protocol that I referred to in, in my opening statement came into being in two thousand and eight. Before Buhari became president, exactly. ECOWAS has been meeting on the same issue for yeah. some time. Yes. The, the drought we are talking about yeah. in, in the Sahel region, yeah. the, the one in 19, between 1984 and 1985, that was not the first one. Yeah. There was one in, in, in the early 19th century, yes. and there was migration at that time. Another, another one happened around 1960 something, yeah. and migration happened. So, and all along, the United Nations, uh, the ECOWAS, uh, they have prescriptions, solutions to all of these things, which are, it appears that we have not really done anything uh, to, uh, to prepare for this. The, 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 do I come in? Yeah, yeah, yes, you Thank should. you very much. You see, my, my, my problem has always been this. Why is it that we cannot be anticipatory in our actions of mm -hmm. governance? We have had um, the West, uh, uh, I mean, projecting that Nigeria might not even be there as a country. Yes. As of 2015. And even sometimes before then. And 
we saw, like you rightly said, that these guys are coming from areas that there have been conflicts, which they have been involved. And most of them will be moving with their arsenals. We did not think of what to do about it. Let me, let me, let me give you another scenario. Do you know that those, again, that are coming could embolden those that you have been living peacefully with? Yes. And they could even, I mean, radicalize them. Let me use the word, even though they are not said to be terrorists. But what is terrorism? Terrorism is you, I mean, using violence or force to frighten or intimidate to achieve anybody aim. to achieve your aim, either by occupation or a political end or an economic end. So their actions does not quite different from what a, a, the normal terrorist does. So we are not anticipatory. We are always waiting, and just like I said before, the meeting that was just held that I know the, 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 the beginning is today, this is something that would have taken place long time before now. And let, by now, we should have known whether it's succeeding or not and begin to find uh, another fine-tuning. This we have not been doing. And that is why, and because of the so many things, we are now bringing it down to two issues in Nigeria, which is the deadliest of them. We are reading religion and ethnicity. Into it. Into it. And it has nothing to and do with it. And that which has nothing to do with it. Because these are, like you said, I've always told people, the issue... All the issues, the economic issues, the, the, the security issues, uh, apart from security issues that have been somehow recent, in the, in, uh, started from early 2020 and so on, so much. Because Metasena came in 1987. Yeah. Some of us were in service, and it was dealt with under, from Kaduna to Kano and Bulunkutu, dealt with immediately. But this, because we started reading all manner of meanings into them, it became difficult to deal with and until we realize that the little incident i mean if you know the origin of the incident in ibado is quite pathetic <laughs> it has nothing to do with wait, 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 yes. uh, two people in the market one thing happened now uh, before you know it, it and, an ethnic and now you see some hard tags you know already yeah, in some area i saw some yesterday stop, stop uh, killing other exactly i saw, one yesterday. I saw it yesterday stop and i said what is it why are we are we and just still folding our arm and allowing things to go like this i think we need to we need to sit up even even if even the headers we are talking about that are in the forest if if there is a common understanding we can gather we can put the like i've always advised let communities put themselves together put the normal headers they know that lives within their community together as a kind of touch force and begin to look for the foreigners that are creating problem within your own society if we do this nationwide we'll get to where we are going to we okay to let, let me turn to mr roti we, we've had president before muhammad Buhari. uh just like i said the issue of uh uh of, uh, of drought in the Sahara region is not is not uh, a recent no. one so we, we, we had uh, jonathan good lord jonathan uh, before Buhari, because people say Buhari is Fulani, if I is Fulani, we had Gulo Jonathan, a South Southerner, before Buhari, we had Obasanjo, a South Westerner, before Buhari. So, why why do you think we are not able to prepare effectively for what we knew was going to happen? Do we really know that this was going to happen? Yes. We, 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 should, we should. We, we oh, of course, we won't know because I mean, Echo was also, Echo was, I, I, was planning I, for it that I, they won't move into coastal countries. I, I, I like that. We should know. Yes. That does not mean we actually knew that this was going to happen. And, and as governors, you anticipate yes. and plan. I, I will tell you this. Uh, my knowledge of security apparatus is that they are trained, the security operatives, they are trained so well that they even have the discerning ability to understand the community, I mean, the mechanics in the community that can culminate into crisis. Yeah. Yes. They are so trained. Yes. Now, if we now have a security uh, system in place, you have officials, you have functional security operatives, you have the military, the police, the SSS, the uh, military intelligence, military police within the military, 
you have the navy, you have the air force, you have uh, the civil defense, you have even the immigration because all of these security mm -hmm. agencies they have intelligence uh, units yes, within yes, them. Yes. If you have all of this, mm. and we cannot mm. anticipate that things will get to this level, then I should begin to entertain a kind of fear that there is internal complicity in this matter. This is the way I'm looking at it. Thank you. See, if we are saying some Fulani, I mean Nigerians, uh, Burkinids and uh, some Malians, they migrated. They were looking for married region. Where are they? Pasture. Yes. Well, it's been there all over. And we know that now that they are coming around, there have been reports of series of departures incidents that were clear departures from what we used to know. They were there on the social media. They were there everywhere. People can see. If you now see a situation like that, that things are growing up, that some others who do not understand how the local others here used to uh, weather the storm of drought, if they now come into our country, and what they are doing is when they get to a Fataka Kataba plantation, they uproot and begin to use it to feed their cows. If the Fulani locals that are here, if they have seen that, if they cannot checkmate them, there is a problem. And if the security operatives cannot discern that, if we allow this thing to continue and we don't move in swiftly, there is a problem. And look at what it has caused now. It has led to what I call deep-seated ethnic bitterness. Deep-seated ethnic bitterness. To the extent that there's a lot of bottled up hands. Yes, when you now see a normal Russian person, a Yoruba person, whether it's a cobbler, they don't look at your full and your your yes. Saraba. Is the Yoruba system with the Yes, yes, yes. Even with my normal cobbler that will come to where I used to play, you that will help me to shine my shoe. Maybe help me to do some little local manicures. That will just help me to shine my shoe. Maybe help me to do some little local manicures. That will just laugh over and and speak little as that to him and he will yeah. go his way. Now, if he does anything that maybe he costs my leg and I say, why are you doing this? And you, uh, you see, you now begin to uh, feel... Impute. Yes. I mean, unprintable words because there are bottled anger. Okay, so okay. We have gotten to that level and like he has rightly suggested, it is better that all the people in the position of authority realize that if they look away and they start to make statements that will protect their votes in 2023, it is those who are alive that will witness 2023. It is better they swiftly move into the say now. Begin to talk like national uh, leaders. Exactly. Begin to look at this issue exactly. like Nigeria issues. <laughs> Begin to see it beyond the border of PDP, APC. Begin to see it as issues that can truncate our togetherness, our unity. If we don't see it that way, the danger ahead is even worse than the one we are looking at present. Oh, okay, just a minute, just a minute. At the beginning, I, I referred to uh, an interview granted by the uh, Governor of Bauchi. There was one that he granted in October 2020 uh, about this, where when he was answering questions about Ruga. You know, at some point, Ruga was suggested yeah. as a solution. Let's quickly listen to that one. There is a lot of mistrust and misconception with regards to the Pulani man. The Pulani man is a global or an African person. He moves from the Gambia, from, from Senegal, and his nationality is just a Pulani man. And uh, as a person, I may have my relations in the Cameroon, but they are also Pulani men. I have relations in, because from the maternal side, I'm a Pulani man. And that is why we want to educate people. A Pulani man sees himself as a Bielsa as uh, somebody coming from the Niger Delta because he speaks the Niger Delta language which you and I don't and of course we would have to just take this as part of our own heritage something that uh, is nice is African and that we cannot just close the border and say the Pulani man is just a Nigerian or this. No. Uh, in most cases, the crisis are precipitated by those outside Nigeria. When there is a reprisal, it is not the Pulani man within Nigeria that causes it. It is that culture of getting revenge which is embedded in the, in the, in the tradition of the Pulani man that attracts 
the President of Congo all over the country, going to give Nigeria the opportunity to really have the best in terms of documentation in the demographics. Because, as I said, the plan man settles anywhere, anywhere he can feed his cattle. And so, if they are put in one place and they are made to understand that this is for to save them as their animals, they are they are exposed to the vagaries of, 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 of the forest and what is going on, cattle rustling, killings, and what have you. And that's uh, why it is important for them to understand that staying in one place is, oh, is good. These forests are there anyway. If you don't occupy them, and create a colony out of them. They create uh, places for the criminals. And today, that's why you have the Zambiza forest, because yes. it's not being utilized. Do you delineate and then really know who is not a full animal from Nigeria? They are all Nigerians, because I said their identity, their own citizenship is Nigerian, even though they have, we have relations all over the world, all over the world, Africa. And so, presumably, they are Nigerians. I think you get me. That is the, the that is the misunderstanding. They move from one place to the other, and they have relations, kids and kings in all the parts of the country and even outside the country. Well, if you listen to, to the governor about it, Bala Mohammed, you get the impression that they know that he, he knows that Fulani will be coming in. From, from other countries into yes. Nigeria. Yes. And, uh, and it seems to be saying that we should all accept it. Yes. And it's saying they are presumably yeah. uh, Nigerians. Yeah. What's your reaction to that? Um, I, I, let, me, let, let me say this. This is exactly what is creating the problem. The, you know already that these people that are coming have not been Nigerians. But for the fact that they are Fulanese, they are automatically Nigerians. And they are not... Uh, acting to to according to the culture of the people that they meet there instead they they are attacking them uh, on their farms and eating their crops and all the like and in fact himself has said it if you did listen that if you touch them there are people that don't forgive they have, they they have culture they have of culture. revenge ben, yes. and they look at all the antecedents of the crisis it's just like uh, there's a, a, a something a, a, a timetable of uh, if this happened you must do this and, and this is not helping our situation but there's something i want to clear he, he, he the, the last speaker did speak about a likeliness internal of uh, internal complicity uh, com particularly for security and intelligence agencies and let me tell you this as an insider all over the world security agencies and intelligence organizations even nations with the strongest institutions are, are their roles are advisory to government in power and that's why we have always said that Everything is about the political will to do the right thing. Look at the could U.S. People, Look at, excuse me, be people within the Look at the U.S. who are sympathetic to, towards the cause of the others. It is possible. That one may be possible. But let me give you an example of U.S. In in in, in the in the uh, nine eleven, America had the intelligence of that impending doom. Yes, but they did not use it because they think that uh, it may not be a correct intelligence. Or even if they, for whatever reason, they think it's a correct intelligence, there could be other factors in their mind that they did not use it. So also are uh, the roles of intelligence organizations, and you, including Nigeria. Uh, if, you, if you look at the Boko Haram thing, uh, they, they have been dead from 2002. Uh, the life one that everybody understands. You remember that during Obasanjo's government, when CNN published that there was kidnapping uh, in the Niger Delta, government denied woefully and in fact they use their influence to make the cnn to sack the 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 the, 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 the guy that reported it but was there no uh, kidnapping but so that is how government had been in most cases but again the security agencies let's come down to our 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 country what is the level of their capacity in terms of logistics Look at the forests that we are seeing that are bounced all over this country. What is the technology that is backing up the security agencies in monitoring these forests? If you look at most of our security agencies at checkpoints, is the physical examination. Are there technology somewhere that can just look as you are passing is seeing you and reporting to them? There is so much for us to do 
So those are the things that we have really not been able to sit down. Let, let, let me quickly ask you this before, yes. before I move on to yes. uh, my other guests. Yes. Uh, apart from lack of water and pasture in the Sahara region. Yes. Uh, do, do you see an international dimension to the, I'm coming, to the hydrated uh, security situation in Nigeria? Why am I asking you that? Yeah. I, I've read a report of claims yeah. that uh, certain countries yeah. with area surveillance capabilities, yes. uh, they know these terrorists, they see them in the Sahara region, they allow them to move around, they allow them, uh, maybe, of certain interest I against Nigeria. I personally, is that true? I personally believe that Nigeria is not at the best of times, all the time with the superpowers. You will agree with me that there is no way they would want you to be what they are. And so, even even assistance that there are some, you remember that uh, uh, some of them refused to sell us arms uh, during uh, 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 Jonathan's administration, and we tried to even look for a third party, you know, to get arms for our fighting forces. So, it, these are things that are in their position, and that is why we need to have political way to develop ourselves technologically. To be able to do things on our own, every time we are there outside looking for who to give us technology, I mean, uh, equipment to buy. And this, if I want to pull you down and I have the equipment, I have a way of playing you out of it. And some of these things are at play. So, okay, okay, l l let me turn to Mr. Ritmi O'Claire. Do you see, do you also believe that uh, some of these problems could be because uh, uh, of the claims that some sardine countries, you know, uh, outside of Africa, see Nigeria as a threat? To their economic interest, uh, not just in Africa, even uh, in West Africa. Oh, well, um, in this kind of situation where you, uh, you can hardly pin anything to a particular source, you never can rule out that. In the game of high tech international politics, part of the strategy you use to reduce the economic effect or economic potential of uh, countries that you think that uh, the post threat is uh, possibly to uh, do things that will I mean, affect their economy in such a way that they can have recourse to you. So I won't foreclose that. But what I will just say is that even when we have outsiders kicking our boats economically, if we don't give way for uh, the effect to be pronounced exactly in a local economy yes then the effect will not be as obvious as this <laughs> so it boils down to the way we manage our internal security mm. you will always have that nigeria is for god's sake the largest african population in the world that means we will have international attraction we will have attention to be here economically politically attentions will be there so that, that that's that's not unfounded but what we should work on is that nigerians must begin to uh, put their eyes on those things that will affect all of us we should stop uh, dissipating energy on things that will not have it let me give you an example i was telling somebody this morning i said okay we have this ability to move through the street and protest against the policies of the government. I said that is the strength of the citizens when it is used in a positive way. That if we, dis if we deploy the same strength yes. in a negative way, it can bring down a country yes. in just one week. Yes. That there will be civil war everywhere, there will be commotion. I said so, I would rather advise that look at some national asset of government. That are wasting away. United houses Hush. in all the Tatsisi states. Hush. Nobody is saying that, okay, can we constitute exactly. a kind of investment uh, company that all these assets will be given to them? Let's have a kind yes. of national international values yes. who will put this into a kind of uh, uh, monetary value. Uh -huh. Then anybody, that company that is taking it over, you must pay also a percentage of money to government percentage every year. When we keep our national asset, we still hand money on them. Why are we not talking about this? Why is it that we'll be interested in making some protests and uh, I mean, reduce it to a kind of a personal issue? Yes. So I said, when we reduce protest to a personal issue, then we are putting the unity of this country at stake. Exactly. That's why that that's what I'm saying. That all of us must begin to see Nigeria as our common constituency. 
we must not see other Yoruba or Igbo or Hausa as our constituency. If we say we want to go our way, some people like some people are saying, they may not know the economic advantage that we derive now from our population. If anybody is coming to African continent to do business, if anybody is thinking of first place of foreign direct investment, if we think of Nigeria, not because our name is so good, not because it has an IG, but because there is a big market, the population yeah. is intimidating here. Yeah. Yes. Everybody who wants to bring his business to Nigeria first, before he takes it as well. So the moment we are not together, we will lose that advantage, pronto. And that is when we now see how vulnerable we are. So we should continue to appeal to our people to see this issue of togetherness as something that we must not treasure. So we must not fold our hands and say, okay, some people are asserting pressure against our, our economy so that they can have this advantage. And as such, we are helpless. No. It's boiled down to the doorstep of the security apparatus that we have in the country. Okay, let me talk to Mr. Uh The presidency uh, 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 is calling for town hall meetings that started already uh, in the Northwest. How effective do you think uh, this can be? Uh, it joined the Obasanjo presidency when the Night of the Delta Militancy was at the head. Uh, uh, town hall meetings were also had, and it appeared that uh, it was effective at that time. But if you look at the dynamics of the Night of the Delta Militancy, they are quite different from what we have now when it comes to the issue of farmers and axemen clashing. Do you think that town hall meetings will be effective in this instance? Town hall meeting will be effective, but in my view, the first town hall meeting to be held should be the president meeting critical stakeholder. Like um, Commissioner John D. And yes, was at, was at, at, at leadership level. Yes. At leadership level, because when Ambassador was going to start the town hall meeting, Indeed. he flew the warring faction into Abuja, sat with them, and read the riot heart. Now, the president needs, if until the president does that, you know, we, see, we have seen meeting. While the president is not talking, everybody believes in Nigeria that nothing is happening. But we need a president who we call the leadership of Beti Ala. You know, it's, it's a different thing that you're having town hall meeting, and that notorious secretary of Beti Ala goes on Channel TV tomorrow exactly. and says something that completely negates everything you have done. Exactly. Or a governor, like the governor about Bauchi just got hot-headed one day, I, 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 I will tell us that uh, a few hundred man is in Nigeria, no matter where it's located in the, in the world. Even in the It's in Nigeria. Anywhere is located in the world, as long as it's a Philadelphia, but it's a Nigerian. And we all know that by history, Philadelphia are not even the original occupant of Nigeria. They migrated, they came here. Yes. So you don't tell me that any Philadelphia anywhere is a Nigerian. So how did he get to that conclusion? I think that's the issue. How did he attend that? So we need the president meeting these people with the governors, the Benti Ala factions, the Joruba Obas, the uh, Obis in the East, bringing all of them together. And just like he said when we were going into the 2018 election, that anybody that touches the ballot box, shoot aside. If a president could give such... You say he has to make that order, statement. He needs to make the very statement that if you see anybody who is not a security agent carrying arm in this country, shoot aside. Just like what the Gadea president did. The Gadea president said, I don't want cattle roaming around in my country. Yes. I want it ranch. So anybody you see taking cattle from one place to the other, kill him and the cattle. And they were doing so. And immediately, the others went and they got ranched. Then the night they got ranched, he gave them license gone to defend themselves within their ranch. So until we see leadership taking definite position but the moment a governor speaks today and says uh the forest is out is not the house of anybody okay if you are in the forest is out we understand that uh killer leaders are there but before we, before we clear the forest we don't want to clear those who are not killers you everybody should get out of the forest as well can take ownership of the place and somebody that speaks for the president says you don't have right to say that in South West said we wanted to go with that, but the next person that watered the whole effort down was the AGF, who says you do not have the right to do that. So the moment you see that coming 
from the presidency and you are not going about doing the uh, towers meeting people don't see it as a regular meeting to calm us down okay, and to share let, evidence let, let, let's look at the ECOWAS protocol on transhumans uh, uh, what transhuman means is the seasonal movement of art leaving their usual grazing areas in search of water and pasture well uh the the, the the protocol allows others to move across west african countries and even prescribes that the government of those countries uh has to protect them let me read certain articles of that uh, uh of the protocol article uh, three says all animals of the bovine caprine uh commonly equine plus as an species shall be allowed free passage across the borders of all member states under the conditions set out in this decision article 4 this decision shall not apply to animals that are taken from one country to another to be sold or animals not referred to in article 3 above article 5 all transhumans livestock shall be allowed free passage across points of entry into and departure from each country on the condition that they have the ECOWAS International Transhuman Certificate, a sample of which is annexed to this regulation. Now, this is one thing that Nigeria is signatory to this agreement, yeah. but this is one thing that the Nigerian government has done between people. Yes. Others are just coming in, there's no certificate. And what this certificate is meant to do is to enable authorities to monitor the acts before they leave the country of origin, to protect the health of local acts, to make it possible to inform the host communities of the arrival of transhumans animals. Now, Article 40 says each host country shall fix the period during which migrating livestock oh, may yeah. enter into oh, and depart from its territory yeah. and inform the other state accordingly. Yeah. Now, Article 50 says each state shall define the areas where transhuman animals may be stopped and shall determine the maximum capacity of each zone thus identified. The accompanying action may must pen up his ad in the zone of which is directed by officials at the point of entry. And it also talks about dispute. Any dispute between farmers and nomadic husbandmen shall first be judged by an arbitration commission on the basis of information gathered by the said commission. Then this commission shall be composed of representatives of the husbandmen, farmers, livestock officers, and agricultural officers, officials from the Ministry of Forest and Water Resources, and local political and administrative authorities. And Article 19 says, in the event that an amicable settlement is not reached, the dispute may be resolved in the law court in conformity with the rules governing settlement of contentious issues. Now, the, the, this there come up is so clear. Thank you, sir. Well, Nigeria is signatory to this protocol. Thank you. Why are we not before you? From all you have read, is there anything that has been put in place no. by this country Not in even compliance. The are they, do they look, does it seem as if they are aware of what you have read? We are signatory to it. And yet, we, we are signatory to it. The meeting was held in Abuja. And now, and, and, now, was in Abuja. And, now, and now, when a government says, look, come and register, let me know who you are. That certainly should be even in accordance with this ECOWAS yes. protocol. Yes. Yet, there are complaints. And the, the Bible, like you read, know, So says, you can see, at the point of entry, it's just a human being is entering the particular yes, country. Yes, yes. But it's not for you to come and become citizen. But if, if government is going to defend and this and, now, and, and then, you see a government which are coming out and, and say, government is supposed to protect you. Just take one at a time. Government is supposed to protect you, so you are not supposed to come with your own arms. But the contrary is the case here. That is why we say every most of the things, as far as I'm concerned, boil down on the political will of government. You see, and like I said, because we are not doing what we are supposed to do, the citizens are reading series of minutes. Like you said, the, the crisis that we have in this country today it has not just started during this administration. It has been there. It, they, they, they have been coming in off and on. We have been having challenges. And well, it's not, the issue now is and, the, it's perception. Yes. The wire precedence. Exactly. It's, it's perce perception. Exactly. And that is why even people in his own government, they are speaking at par. I give you, a, 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 I mean, a, a different... Look at uh, the governor of Kaduna State. He's opposed to um, uh, 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 negotiations. Um, uh, with bandits or, or, or amnesty with bandits, but his colleagues in Zamfara and, in Zamfara and the, the, that line are of the opinion that if this can solve the problem, 
Why not? Because we are faced with a lot of problems now. If we can approach them from if various... I, if there is a report so, where Gumi said, exactly. some of the bandits said that they are they want to acquire until... Uh, uh, aircraft. aircraft exactly. Yes, yes. So, he said it yesterday. I, I, I read yeah, it. There, there's a uh, 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 and, uh, um, so they can, uh, they can from they the ground, can, they, they can, can shoot aircraft from exactly. the ground. Exactly. The same, the same, the same uh, uh, Kaduna State, just, with, I think, within the weekend, about 23 persons were killed within a few days. Among them are our security forces that were ambushed. I mean, so you, you can see, if government officials at that level have not even agreed what to do, when then are we going? Okay, okay. at another meeting of ECOWAS in 2018, uh, uh, one of his recommendations, let me quickly read it to you. The urgent need to articulate a clear policy guideline on the development of modern ranches, including its full value chain in member states across the region. Mr. Tosin Jagere, do you see ranching as a solution to this problem? Is, 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 is the, 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 if I, the solution, I, I've not actually read the ECOWAS. But you live in all states. I, I, it depends. Or it says that ranching should be, if you want to do ranching, ranching should actually be the responsibility of the man who has the cattle. Should be private. It's, you should simply, government should simply be involved at the point of making laws, open grazing band, moving your cattle around band. So if you need to have it, ranch it. So you will now determine where is economically viable for you to host a ranch. Where do we have land and it's cheap? Now, if a state government decides to say, okay, I want to make money from this process and I have enough land, they could say, okay, just like kind of state gov governor said, I have land. All of you come to my state. But, but, but the problem is, the problem, let me quickly ask you this. Now, they, they, they ask me, they know that even in northern Nigeria, there's desert encroachment. Yeah. They know that southern Nigeria is more yeah. uh, conducive for them. Yeah. And if you look, many people in the south do not seem to agree with the issue of bringing people to do ranching in the state. It is conducive to them because the there's no water and pasture. are all roaming around. If you ranch cattle in Kano, people in Kano are drinking water. They are doing farming. And they are, they are doing farming. And they don't import their water from this from the West. So if you raise them in Kano, where you place them, you can give them, you can feed them there and water them there. But because they are looking for free yam tuba, free cassava tuba that they can feed the animal with in the West, yes, that may be an attraction. But if there is a law that says, but when you look at this Equa protocol clearly, it's not that our problem. If we follow this Equa protocol clearly, we won't even have this crisis that we have now. Yeah. The Ecuador protocol is clearly, was, will be, if you just follow this clearly, this problem will be solved. Okay, okay. Mr. Rotimi Blair. finally, how best can we de-escalate the rising tensions in the country? One, the security agency should, first of all, uh, define the problems very well, which is either as far as farmers and the uh, uh, what do you call them now? These uh, attackers, uh, the, the, the bandits, the, the violent, uh, the bandits. I'm, I'm not just talking about us, man. Yes. I'm talking about everything now. Banditry, yes. insurgents. No, the, the entire security challenge yes. came from this source. So the farmer has class um, crisis. They must first of all address that. And the best way to address it, you must come to this type reality. Is for each state to make sure that they provide a kind of support for uh, uh, creation of uh, grazing areas. areas and raise tax or levies from it. That's one. Once that is done, then it means you have been able to classify the new business from those with wicked intention. You're saying that the 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 assessment should be taxed. The show. Their activities should be tasked by a respective state. You, you know how jihad war started? How did it start? When the Ottoman down for you, when yes. it started jihad war, yes. uh, some of the axemen <coughs> and yes. then in Gobel State yes. they supported it because the ruler of that particular house state had imposed levy 
on 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 on, on the hazmat. So because of that, they supported Udo and Fodio because they, they didn't like it. They, no, but they, no, wait. The truth, are, the truth. Are because because of that, let's, let's move on. No, no, no. We 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 get to that some other day. No, if you go to my car now, if you go to my car, where they are selling car, the owner of the car that brought the car to sell in that place. We we'll pay a certain amount of money. I know that. <laughs> let, 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 let me move to no, Mr. Yeah, thank you. I, I, how best do you think we can de-escalate the rising tensions in the I country? Think and I'm not just talking about. I'm talking about no, all the security issues. Now. No, no. But uh, let, let me. I want to address that of the headers issues. We should not now know that it's a security issue. Yes. It's no more uh, ordinary economic issues. Therefore, I would want governments, governments at all levels, should meet and take the issue of ranching seriously. Mm -hmm. However, these are persons that are not used to buying anything. They are used to free feeding, cutting your farm. So they, they will not put that kind of money. Government can set up a fund as a kind of loan. And why would states will put head together in areas like in Ondo State, four places, five places, 10 local governments who can get land. Out of this fund, state government will be paid. Don't forget that in the north, they, 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 they head us pay what we call Jankali. That is cattle tax. Okay. So those are taxes okay. that must be paid. And the fund that the federal okay. government, through their business, to be borne by the federal government anyway, can also help them in financing the ranching we are talking about. But the issue is that if they are not going about as, 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 Mr. Jagger, can you do that another 20 seconds? Yeah. How best can we escalate the rising tensions in the country? Leaders should be present. Our leaders should be present. You cannot stay aloof. If you want to lead, lead from the front and let the people see you leading from the front. That's, I think, the solution. All right, let me thank you very much, Mr. Tosi Jagger. Thank you very much for coming, Mr. Ruth Miogle. Uh, Mr. Ab Ab Abu Adams, thank you very much for it's coming. It's my pleasure. And that's it on today's edition of the Roundtable. My name is Dimitri Danis. Good afternoon.